TypeScript is a great programming language. It can help you finding errors before you deploy them in production. And today I will show you my top five lessons that helped me to become a better TypeScript developer. Lesson number one, don't use any. There are cases where it makes sense, but in most of the cases, it's better to have a defined type. When I'm executing this function here, we'll get to see number three, but we allow any type here. So that's why we can also insert an array of numbers. And now our code won't return the expected result. Instead of the value three, we get back the value 12. And the value 12 is not even a number, it's now a string. And this is very unexpected and it's not what we intended it to be. So that's why I tell you to not use any and really stick to the types that your function can work with. It's better to be specific here and use the type of number. Do the same also for B so that uh, you then are forced to correct your code and use also number when supplying the arguments. Now our function will return three, which is what we want. So please stay away from any and only use it when your code can handle any type of value. Lesson number two, define function return types. Imagine the business requirements change and we need to change our input types from number to string. Then we would go here and we would change our inputs so that they become strings. And then we will also update our function signature to allow strings here as parameters. Then our refactoring is done and things might look okay. But actually, by just changing now the input types, we also get a different output. If we hover here over the function, we will see the TypeScript sees that A and B are of type string. So it infers that the return value is also of type string. And TypeScript is completely right about it because behind the scenes a string concatenation will happen. So we will get to see number 12 again and our strings will indeed return a new string. This is not our desired behavior because we want to have back a number. If we would have defined a function return type, we would have seen that. For example, here we can be explicit and we can define that the return value has to be of type number. This will immediately result in a TypeScript error that reminds us of also parsing our input values. So we are forced now to pass these values here. I will also supply the radix to make sure that we use the decimal system. And when doing this, I'm fixing now the TypeScript error and I will also get the number that I wished for. So I will get to C3 and my code stays intact. Lesson number three, use additional type checking. Let's go back to our initial version of the sum function. It was accepting A and B as number and returns then the sum of A and B. Now we want to extend that by a third number, which is C. When doing this, then TypeScript reminds us of also updating our function call because our function call doesn't provide a third argument. It only provides two. So let's also add a third number here. Now TypeScript is happy and it looks like we are doing okay. We are entering one, two, and three, and we are expecting the sum of six. When running now our script, then we will see that the actual result is not six, but three, because we forgot to make use of C. Luckily, TypeScript has a solution for us, because TypeScript can help us to also see this problem before it happens in production. We just have to go to our TypeScript configuration tsconfig.json and in here we will see compiler options. If we have a look in here, then we will see that there's also a link to a website from Microsoft that tells us about the different compiler options. And uh, let me just quickly open it up here with the integrated browser from VS Code. 
And um, by checking that website, we will see the compiler options and the reference for them. And we will see that there are specific ones that are there for type checking. The flag that can help us now is the one for unused parameters. Let's click on it. Here we can read about it, but I will also show you in practice how we can make use of it. In the TS config, I can scroll to that specific section and I will find in here no unused parameters. And this flag actually says no to something. It says no to parameters that are not in use. When we are activating this, then we will get reminded by TypeScript that all parameters have to be used. So if we go now back to our script, we will notice that the C is now marked yellow and TypeScript tells us that C is declared but not in use. So when we try now to execute our script, we will run into an error. And the TypeScript compiler will not be happy and will prevent us from building this code. What we have to do now is fixing our problem and making use of C by adding it to A and B. A quick check if we are good now. So let's execute the code once more and yeah, we get to see number six. One thing to mention, if you do not have a TS config, you can simply generate one. So I will delete this one here to reproduce the case. And now I can call my TypeScript compiler using npx. And with npx, I can execute the TypeScript compiler with the init flag, which will then generate a TypeScript config for me. Lesson number four, avoid typecasting. So there is this type person that has a property h of type number and a property address of type object that has a city inside of type string. Now I have here this constant Benny and Benny has an h, but Benny doesn't have an address yet. And I want to make Benny a person and I can simply do that by just casting Benny to a person using s. And now comes the problem as I said already, Benny doesn't have an address. So if I want to lock now the address of Benny, TypeScript will allow me to do that because I convinced TypeScript to see Benny as a person. So when I enter here Benny, then TypeScript tells me that I can call address because Benny is here of type person and person has an address. And from the address, I can call the city. And this is now very, very dangerous because when I'm executing the code, address is not defined. And when I'm calling then the city on the address, I will call a property of an undefined value. Let me show you how this looks like here in the terminal. So I'm executing main TS and I will run into a severe error. We will see here a type error cannot read properties of undefined. So it cannot read from this undefined address here, the property called city. And this is an actual runtime error. So when we deploy this code in production and it gets executed somewhere, it will explode. And we don't want that our code explodes. So the better option here is to not use the type casting and to define the type. So I can define here the type next to my object. And now TypeScript will complain and tell us that the property address is missing from the type that just has an H. There are situations where typecasting makes sense. Let's have a look at this constructed example here. We have the type of person and we have a print address that gets a person and then does some validation here. And when the validation is successful, prints the address of the person, in particular the city. The key here is this validation part. So if the person doesn't have the address object here, then we will throw the missing address error. And the missing address error throws an error with the message, please enter an address. I built this validation to protect JavaScript developers because I'm exporting the function. So when I, for example, distribute my code as a library, then potentially people can use it with JavaScript. They don't have to use TypeScript. They can use it also then with JavaScript. And um, this way they don't have the type checking 
for the parameters. And that's why I want to make sure that the person has an address. But when I'm calling this function from TypeScript, then TypeScript would forbid me to put in a person that doesn't have an address because the address field here is required. We see that in a test. I built a test case for the print address function and I'm saying here that it throws an error when the person does not have an address. But to really validate that and to prove that the function throws an error, I have to put in invalid code. So I have to put in a parameter that doesn't have an address. And I cannot do that because TypeScript will complain here and will tell me, hey, this person needs to have an address. So to bypass this TypeScript check, I can now use the typecasting with S, which will allow me to forward now this object to the print address function. And now I can test that this function here does my validation and then throws the error that I implemented. I will show that to you by running the test so that you really believe me what I'm telling you. And ta-da, one test passed. The fifth and final lesson is to use ECMAScript modules and the ECMAScript module syntax. Here I have a common JS syntax. I'm using the require statement in combination with const. And when we execute this code here, we will get to see my operating system type, which is Windows. Yeah, we see here Windows. I'm <laughs> quite a unicorn among all web developers and uh, TypeScript developers. But in general, the function call worked okay. No problem here. However, because I'm using the common JS syntax with require, TypeScript cannot help me with the type system. It actually tells me that I should convert require calls to import because only with the ECMAScript module syntax and uh, with using proper imports, we will get the um, typings. So what I will have here now is uh, something that is quite unsafe because if I make a typo like type P, then I will run into a problem and I'm not getting to see that beforehand. So my code now fails. Yeah, I will just extend a bit the terminal and we will see here that I have a runtime error, my code fails and TypeScript didn't warn me before. This is something that can be improved. So for example, we can use ES module syntax with common JS behavior. It means that we change here the const to an import and we say, okay, we import the OS module and uh, we will have here the require syntax now we have the common JS behavior, so it's like common JS, but um, through the import, we will get the type support from TypeScript that tells us now that we cannot use type P. Even better, it gives us here a hint, and in the hint, it notes that we are better off by using type. So let's correct that. Now everything is okay, and we have the TypeScript typing support. We can also go one step uh, further and use um, full ES module syntax. So just by exchanging this here with uh, from, yeah, we just say we import OS operating system from the OS module here, and then everything is also fine. And just to uh, show you that we will get um, type support, I will make uh, an error here and we will get to see that this is an error. What is also quite nice is to declare those modules as node modules. So there is a thing that is called core modules in Node.js. It's available with Node.js 14.18 or like from Node.js 16 on. And um, this means that you can now add the prefix node. And with this node prefix here, we will declare that module as a node module which gives us the hint that this uh, import here comes from the node core system and not from a package that we may have installed through NPM.